Hi there, and welcome to episode one and the second episode in my devlog series. In episode zero, um, I gave an introduction to the project, and in this episode, I want to dive deeper into the terrain generation. Well, let's see what we're going to dive into first. Um, <clears throat> like I said, terrain generation is the biggest topic. Um, for that, we're going to start off with a quick demo to show off again uh, how it all works. After that, we're going to do a deep dive into what the steps are that I apply to get trains like this. Um, and after we've done that, I want to give a small update on the current progress. So first up is the, the quick demo. Um, here you can see in the background uh, an island being generated again. Um, We'll actually show off a few islands being generated in a higher speed than normal. Um, while we play this, I can list off a few ba basic things that I use. Uh, for example, I use Unity 2020. So this is um, a slightly older version, but a very stable one. So I prefer to, to work with that. I use the built-in Unity terrain. I've seen some questions from people asking if I was doing voxel uh, generation, um, so I'm not. I'm just using the generic Unity Terrain object for that. And what I can tell for algorithms that are being used, um, MPD, Midpoint Displacement, is a big one uh, I'm using. I apply some Voronoi peaks, uh, I apply Perlin noise, and for path generation I just use a, a, a homemade A-star algorithm. Having said that, let's dive deeper into the terrain generation. Like I said before, uh, MPD or midpoint displacement is one of the bigger steps I use for generating the terrain. Um, in the background right now, you can sh see an example of what a raw terrain with just midpoint displacement applied to it looks like. This is how every island starts off like. Um, after we've done some midpoint displacement, we apply uh, Voronoi peaks. To be honest, they're just random points on the map that are elevated, just to spice things up a little bit. After we've applied the Voronoi peaks, uh, we continue with Perlin noise. This makes the terrain a little bit more rough instead of very smooth, makes it all look a little bit more realistic. Um, after I've applied Perlin noise, uh, we do need to smooth things out a little bit again. So um, yeah, I apply some smoothing to the terrain and after that's done, um, I actually make it into an island. So the, the corners are cut off a little bit so that the whole terrain uh, yeah, feels and looks more like an island. After islandification is done, um, we start with placing the city. Um, city placement is done pretty random. Um, there are of course some rules for the placement, like not too close to the shore, um, but not much more than that currently. Um, I'm not going to go into the actual city generation in this video, that will be a whole other topic for its own video, probably the next one. Um, so yeah, you'll have to wait for that. Um, after city generation is done, we start with points of interest generation. Um, not much special stuff happens here either. Um, what I do is I have some templates, some prefabs uh, with the points of interest in a list. Those prefabs have values assigned to them that determine how far away they have to be from other points of interest. And um, yeah, I just start generating. I get a random point on the map, check if that is a valid point, considering all the other points of interest and the point of interest I want to spawn. I give it a few tries, if it doesn't want to be spawned, I remove the point of interest from the list and I move on to the next point of interest. I have multiple types of points of interest, some are unique and some are repeatable, depending on those statuses, um, yeah, they will be either placed once or multiple times. After points of interest have been placed, we need to start generating paths between all of them. Um, what happens here is that currently, initially, there's a path being generated between the, the city and the harbor. And after this path has been generated, we look into all the points of interest that demand a path. All those points will get a path generated as well. 
<clears throat> then we have a list of points of interest that could have a path and a random selection of those will get a path generated and then we have points of interest that don't need one so they don't get one the generation itself is uh, like i said in the intro just uh, yeah, a homemade a star algorithm um, what i do is i use the height map um, as a reference point i create nodes for every point on the height map and use that as my uh, basis for the ASA algorithm to determine the, the path. And with that, I take into account the slope uh, of those points, um, the average height, and of course, distance between them. After points of interest have been placed, uh, we, we make the, the textures, um, or we actually apply the splat maps to the terrain. That's the better wording. <laughs> um, Splat maps are depending on height of the terrain, on the slope of the terrain, and um, that is pretty much it right now. I still want to look into biomes later, uh, but right now they just, yeah, they take height and uh, slope into account. After the terrain uh, gets its textures, we actually spawn tree and grass, um, so the vegetation. This is done using the, to the textures on the terrain. And so I'm actually going checking the terrain for the placement of the textures and depending on which texture has been placed, that type of tree or uh, vegetation needs to be spawned. Um, so yeah, that, that's how trees and grass are pretty much spawned. Um, after that is done, we do NPC placement. Um, that is currently still in active development so right now it kind of works in the way in the same way as points of interest are generated we just get a few points on the map um, check if they're not too close to other npc spawners and then create an npc spawn element that will start spawning npcs when the player gets close enough and after all that is done we have our terrain um, when you press the start game button, the player currently just spawns right in front of City Hall and the city. Um, in the future, this will change into the choice the player makes at the start of their new character. So, for example, do you want to start at the, the docks as a pirate? Or are you going to start as a, as a necromancer in the woods? So you'll start in a, like a witch's house or something. I don't know. I'm still working on that. But um, yeah, that's uh, what we have right now. What's maybe good to know is that um, for the basics of terrain generation, I've actually followed a Udemy course that helped me uh, start off in the right direction. Um, of course, all my custom adjustments to the whole project are not in there, but basic things like getting a generated terrain shape uh, using the midpoint displacement, using the Foronoi peaks, uh, the Perlin noise. That's all part of the Udemy course. So for current progress, I want to discuss a few things as well. Um, the last few weeks have been a little bit less active for me on development for this project. And this has primarily to do with uh, Global Game Jam in between. Um, I was part of Global Game Jam 2023. Together with an awesome team, I've worked on the game Mushi. Um, you can see that on screen right now. Uh, it was a really cool time uh, working on it together with the team, so I really enjoyed that. Um, you can download the game for free. I'll link it into the description. Uh, so if you're interested, you can download that. Other than that, I've also been working on my own project, of course. Um, I've been working on it a little bit more again the last few days. Um, Currently, I'm working on combat, so what that means for me is I need to be making a new custom third-person controller because I was using Unity's starter assets one. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm working on that right now, playing around with different um, weapons as well, different move sets. Uh, you can see that in the background. And that's it for terrain generation. I can imagine that I might have skipped out on a few details here and there that you might have been interested in. If that's the case, please leave a reply. I might actually reply to you um, directly or I might make a video combining some of your questions together. Kind of depends on the, you know, the response to this video. So I'll see how I handle that. Either way, I would 
love to reply to your questions either way. So yeah, leave a reply and I'll try and take care of that. In the next episode, I'll dive deeper into city generation. So if you're looking forward to that, yeah, uh, keep the channel uh, in check. Maybe follow me on Twitter. Um, my Twitter handle hand, handler name is the Dutch tree. I'll link it in the description as well. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. See you in the next.